you've petitioned the court for a DNA test, you want to prove to your ex-fiance, Mr. Earls, that he fathered your three-year-old son, Marcus Jr., is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. You say Mr. Earls called off your wedding just three months prior to getting married because of his paternity doubts. Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Earls, you and Ms. Baylor have been together since you were 17 years old, and you believe she's been unfaithful the entire relationship. Yes, Your Honor. Today, you're countersuing Ms. Baylor for a lie detector test because you want the entire truth. Yes, Your Honor. All right, Ms. Baylor, what have Mr. Earl's ac accusations and denial done to your relationship? Your Honor, his accusations have ruined our relationship. It has tore us apart. We've been together since I was 17. And he moved in with us, and then we had two beautiful daughters. And then after our third child, we decided that we wanted to get married. And he caught off the wedding three months before we got married. Really? With and we planned everything. I had everything picked out, Your Honor. I had the dress. He bought me a ring, everything. Our wedding date was supposed to be 12, 13, 14. Like, that was so significant. And it really hurt me for him to, to do that, Your Honor. Can I submit this to you? What is that? This is my wedding planner. I had everything. May I see that, Ron? Yes, ma'am. So you really planned an entire wedding? Yes. You had three children with this man? Yes, Your Honor. And I can see that really hurts you. It hurts, like, so bad for him to not think that my son is his. Like, I don't know where these rumors came from. I don't know who started them. I don't know anything. Like, I love Mr. Earls. I want to spend the rest of my life with him. He's a, he's a beautiful little boy. So, Mr. Earls... Yes, Your Honor. You certain this child is not yours? I'm certain. I'm 100% sure that that is not my baby. So this had to be really serious for you to call off the wedding just three months before. It was very serious. What happened? I went away on August 16th, and uh, Sandra came and visited me two weeks after I was gone. Uh, and she uh, gave me some news that she was uh, pregnant. Okay, I was excited. I was... Come to find out a week later, she visited me again. And she tells me, uh, I stepped out on you a month prior to the time you had left. A month before I got pregnant with my son, I did step out on, on the relationship. I did. This was nowhere near the conception date. This was a whole month before I conceived. And when I told Mr. Earls that I was pregnant, you know, he was happy. You know, we were both happy because we had two miscarriages before that, unexplained. You know, and it devastated us, and we wanted a baby. We planned to have my son. And when he went away, he just feels that, you know, the dates don't add up, I suppose. We didn't plan anything. Okay, do you know what month you cheated in, Miss Baylor? July. Okay. Sure was. Because I got pregnant in August. I got pregnant August 14th. Let me go to my conception calculator here so I can understand this. When was Marcus Jr. born? He was born April 22nd, 2013. Okay. Now, if we calculate the date of his birth, your conception date would have been July 19th through the July 29th, 2012. Yeah, but he's supposed to be That's about a 10-day window. That's when you said you cheated. I cheated in July, yes, Your Honor, but that is not when I conceived. My son was due May 7th. But I had a C-section due to I had two other kids. My blood pressure goes up when I go into labor and I had to have a C-section. That's why he was born April 22nd. Ms. Baylor, you're saying the baby was born early. When and so true. your conception date would actually have been later than what is projected here. Yes. Mr. Earl, do you think the baby was born early? No, that baby wasn't born early. She, she carried that baby full time. That is not you true, don't know, You don't know no baby premature six, six pound, nine ounces. I don't. That's a big baby. <laughs> I do agree. A six pound, nine ounce baby, I mean, it, it, that is a... That's a full-term weight. Yeah, that's full. Exactly, because I was due May 7th. I had a C-section, which was scheduled at 38 weeks. Our daughters weigh five pounds, se uh, uh, seven ounces, five pounds, eight ounces, and they was full-term. The, all babies are not going to be born the same All my babies way. is. No, they're not. No, they are not. Because we're not going to get into that because we're here to prove that my son is your son. 
he, he is not my son. That is it, your son. Look, she carried him full time. She cheated on me in July. The time adds up. I just, she brought me all the way down. I just want her to tell me the truth. I want to understand, why are you cheating in the relationship? I just felt like he was still she lying to me. She her legs. So you, who was this person you cheated with? His sister's cousin. So this was a one night thing, a little, a fling. What happened? It was a fling, maybe, but not that long, just a couple of times, and, like, that was it. A couple too many. But I used protection when I stepped out, unlike him. He has two other kids outside of our relationship oh. that he stepped out on me on plenty of times. I do. I do. If you want more episodes of Paternity Court, make sure to subscribe and click on the notification bell. She cheated on me with the cable man. No, I did not cheat on him with the cable man. He was a friend. Wait, when did the cable man get in it? As soon as I went away, the cable man came in. He was a friend. He took me to get my kids something to eat one day, and we went to go play pool and have a few beers at the bar, and I cheated, supposedly. My brother also even told me about some things. What did your brother tell you? Oh, my brother told me he didn't call her doing mysterious things on her phone, talking to others, talking about she want to meet up with him and things. We have your brother joining us today from your hometown. That's good. Mr. Earls, can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. Your brother has testified that you've caught Ms. Uh, Baylor in some very uh, questionable circumstances. Is that yes, true? Yes, ma'am. About three weeks before prior, before my brother uh, went away, I called Miss Baylor, texting another dude, talking about how she want to have sex with him. The dude picture kept popping up on the phone. Miss Baylor? Yes, I do flirt a lot. Oh, I, I do. Yeah. I flirt a lot. Yeah. But yeah. I more than a lot. did not. Yeah, more than a lot. No, that is a lie. But oh, you I were too. on the phone texting a guy. Yes, I was. But Marcus has me done me so much worse. Mr. Earls, do you know anything else? Uh, about two weeks after my bro was uh, went away, I was having a get together at the house, and she was drinking, having a good time. They said, "No, oh, she burnt off and didn't come back till the next day." She came home the next day. Yes, ma'am. Who did you see I her mean... leave with, Mr. Earls? A dude. I left with my cousin. And that's probably who he seen me leave with. Nah, it's her cousin. my cousin. It ain't a cousin. Yeah, she's a compulsive liar. All right, Mr. Okay. Earls, thank you so much for your testimony today. Yes, ma'am. So, Mr. Earls, you say she just lies. Yes, Your Honor. And that's why you asked the court to administer a lie detector Yes, Your Honor. Test. Oh, I just had a light bulb. Because I'm thinking to myself, he is so mad at her for cheating, and it is wrong. But you were cheating and you got two children outside the yep, relationship. Exactly. But exactly. what you're you most angry at, you're saying, you told me the truth that you cheated, but you feel like she's making up this whole story about the baby yeah, being she early because she doesn't want to admit that it's a possibility that this other guy is the father. She's in denial, Your Honor. That's what's making you most angry. Yes, ma'am. So when you found out she cheated, did you immediately have doubt? Yes, I already knew. Like, it, it already... It clicked to me. I, I what was clicked? Insecure that she cheated and that's, that's his baby. May I submit my evidence? Absolutely. Look, what did you bring it, for the it's, court? It's just a picture to show everybody in this courtroom that this Ron, is not my... Uh, let me see that, that, that please, That, that is not my son. You're presenting to the court... A side-by-side -side photo. On the left-hand side is Marcus Jr. Correct. And on the right-hand side is a picture of you. Yes, Your Honor. You don't believe you look anything alike? Nothing alike. Okay, I have a question. How did the baby get the name Marcus Jr. then I, if I you never bad. thought... I felt bad. I always wanted a uh, son. I wanted the son uh, with her. So I, I felt bad. I mean, she crying in the hospital, laid up with her guts all on her belly. So <laughs> I was like, yeah, you could, you could give him my name. Your Honor. So, wait a minute. You seem like a strong-minded young man. Yes, How do you get to the hospital and decide, okay, I'm gonna give this baby my last name as my junior and I don't believe he's mine? That's... Man, I can... I, look, I don't know. I just know I made a mistake. Did you sign the birth certificate? I yes. signed it. Yes, you he signed did. the birth certificate? Yes, he did. When you signed that birth certificate, you acknowledged paternity. Well, you well, understand that, right? Well, hopefully this DNA can help me out. You know, black women, like, peop uh, put people on child support. I ain't got time for that. 
you're not going to pay. Hold on. Hold on, because I'm a black woman. Uh, no, no. Well, certain, certain ones. I'm sorry. Hold on. I'm sorry, y'all. Sorry, y'all. Hold on. Now, sorry, we, Yana. look, we get to the truth in this courtroom. Okay. <laughs> Hold on. Let's get something straight. Yeah, I'm back up. It's though. women of all races and colors that are receiving child support for children. But let me be clear. The child support is for the child. Yeah. Exactly. And then let me be even clearer. You did this. Once you signed that birth certificate, you were responsible for child support. So don't come in my courtroom talking about what a black woman is gonna do, because this black woman is gonna let you know. <laughs> now, I'm really ready for the results. Sorry. Uh, Ron, hand me the lie detector results first. Your Honor. You were asked, during the last 10 years, other than the one time you admitted to cheating, have you had sexual intercourse with another man? You answered yes. Ooh. The lie detector determined that was the truth. Ooh. That's because we split up. Yeah. Within the... We, we split up. A lot of times we split up. Yeah. Ms. Baylor, we asked you, did you have sexual intercourse with the man you admitted to cheating on Marcus with more than one time? You answered yes. Wow. The lie detector determined that was the truth. Wow. I just mentioned that here. I have nothing to hide. I mentioned that. Mr. Earls, you seem surprised. She did testify in court today that it was kind of a fling. It was more than one time. Yeah, well, that ain't what I've been hearing for the last three years. So you're saying, even though it was determined that she was telling the truth, the answer she gave to the questions are different from what, what she's, she's been, been tell telling you. Yes, sir. And yeah. that's why you called off the wedding. That's exactly why I called off the wedding. To be a man that's always wanted a son, to be excited about it, to go in the hospital, to give this child your name, to sign the birth certificate, to be legally responsible for the child, why is it you haven't been able to accept... It seems like you've done everything else. I want to give him the opportunity to know his father. He knows his father for the I last I grew up year. without a father, okay? I've been here for him, okay? But I want to give him that opportunity. If you're not this child's biological father, is this relationship over? Where do you go from here? It's over. She, she looked at lie detector test. She passed it, because, I mean, I already knew she was lying to me all this whole time anyway. She passed it, though. You say the relationship is over if Marcus Jr. is not your biological child. Correct. But you had two children outside the relationship, and she stayed with you. She did, y'all. <laughs> Ms. Baylor, what are you thinking right now? What are you feeling? I feel that it's so unfair, because... I've been with him for so long. I'm the one who's been there. But he can have babies by other women and then always run off to them. But you want to leave me? But my son is his. They look so much alike. You can tell. Like, I want to be with Mr. Earls for the rest yeah, of my life. Like, I love great. him. He's the only man I know since 17 years old. I was young. Yeah, like, like he is all I know. If Marcus Jr. is not Mr. Earl's biological child, where do you go from here? I mean, I would love to be with him, but I can't make somebody stay if they don't want to stay. Even though I did step out, yes, but I was there for him. All right. Well, I have the results. Let's get to the truth. In the case of Baylor versus Earl's Sr., when it comes to three-year-old Marcus Earl's Jr. It has been determined by this court. Mr. Earls, you are the father. I told you. I told you. I have my doubts, I have my insecurity. But I do love that little man. And I'm sure he loves you, too. You're the only man he knows as his father? The only one. And does it hurt you in this moment that you did carry that doubt for three full years of his yeah, life? Yeah, that's what's killing me right now. I'm sorry. And I'm sorry to you, too. I'm sorry, too. This is a time for you to stand up and be the man, the best man you can be. 
You're right, John. When you give a child your name, there's a responsibility in that. Because when he looks to the example of who he can be in this world, his first point of reference is going to be the man that has his name. So that means it's time for you to create that life so your son can have a life he can emulate. That's how you break the cycle. That's how you make sure he doesn't end up in the places where you've been. If you all are going to build a family or try to figure this thing out, you got to set a proper foundation. Mr. Webb, you have been waiting two years for this day. You claim the defendant, Mrs. Forrest, left you for dead only to find out once you got out of a coma that she was pregnant and that the baby could be yours or her husband's. Yes, Your Honor. Ms. Forrest, you and your husband are here today desperate to put an end to this drama. You say you have no doubt your daughter's biological father is indeed your husband. Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Webb, what are your intentions today if the DNA determines that you are the biological father? My intentions are to fight for full custody rights if she is my daughter. Well, that's my daughter, and you ain't getting her. Ms. Forrest, how did you get yourself in this triangle? My husband got in some trouble and I ended up um, meeting Mr. Webb through one of my friends. We hit it off and then I ended up leaving Mr. Forrest for Mr. Webb. So you began a sexual relationship? Yes, yes Your Honor. All right. And, and were you using protection at the time? No, Your Honor. All right. Mr. Webb, what is your take on this? It didn't happen like that at first. Yes, we was in love. But towards the end, I was on life support. No, that's not and how it happened. As soon as I got out the hospital, I had got a phone call saying that she was pregnant. I heard it from my aunt first, but no. on my way to Illinois with my dad, she had called me and told me that it was a possibility that Elena was my child. She told you a possibility. Yes, yes ma'am. So that means she was admitting that she also had slept with other people. Yes, ma'am. Did you think the other person was just her husband? At the time, no, Your Honor. You thought there were other possible? Yes, Your Honor. No. And you why would just... you think that? Why would you have reason to think that? Because she was working at the time and some of her check would be coming up missing every time she would get paid. No. And so, no. what did you suspect? Because something was missing out of her check? She would get off at 10 o'clock. It would take at least 15 minutes to get home. But she would come in at 11 to 11 It took about 45 minutes to get from where so I was working. So, it was missing time and missing money. Yes, Where she was MIA. Yes, now, from, All right. where she, from where she worked at, and I know for a fact, it took 45 minutes to get from her work and at the no, to Your Honor, the house. That's a lie. And at the time... No, Your Honor. Because when I moved so, back... So, Ms. Forrest, let me just ask you point blank. Were you sleeping with anyone else besides Mr. Webb and your husband? No, Your Honor. Not during that time? That's was, a lie, But Your when Honor. you called Mr. Webb and said, I'm pregnant, I, you did say, and there's a possibility. Which I didn't get back to miss, with Mr. Uh, Forrest until after... Travis had done left, or Mr. Webb has done left. Your Honor, I have a letter from my mom where I was on life support when she came to drop off my stuff. Which we were already broken up by then. Yeah. motel with Mr. Forrest. This is evidence you'd like me to see? This is a Jerome, my will you hand statement. that to me, please? They broke up like three days, from my knowledge, like three days before he ever went into a coma. No, Your Honor, I did not have we any fighting, idea that we were, we were up. having problems. It. I had called my dad for a bus ticket to Alabama. Two hours after I got off the phone with him, I had ended up on life support. So this is a, a, a statement from your mom? That is a statement from my mom. And he was there the very next morning in a motel with her. Is that true? We were already broke up. We've done called it quits. We done and called man, it everything. Me and my That's wife had already been started honor. talking back by getting back together. Well, after they done broke up like three days before he ever went to the hospital. No, Your Honor. Bottom line is, he's in the bed on life support and now you have reconciled with your husband. Yes, Your Honor, but I tried to see him. His mother would not let me see him. I'm sure there were some feelings because you had gotten back with your husband while he's fighting for his life. 
which I loved. I loved Mr. Webb at the time, but we were. You loved him. Well, I mean. I... Yeah. So when you My realized you were pregnant, when, when exactly did you realize you were pregnant? The middle of September. That is All right. your honor. Because I didn't know at the time I was pregnant. So, Mr. Webb, how did you find out she was pregnant? She had called me the day that I got out of the hospital. I was on my way to Illinois with my dad. I got a phone call. We had a discussion. She said that I may be the father, but then again, I may not be because she was back with Mr. Forrest. I was there with her at the doctor's office, so it was the middle of September when she found out. It was in August whenever she found out that she no. was pregnant. No, it was not. So, there's not a true. month discrepancy. You say September, you say August. Yes, Your Honor. So, when you got the news, did you immediately think you're the father? Well, she had told me ahead of time that I may not be the father, but there was a chance that I was the father. So now, what makes you stand in court today, Ms. Forrest, and say that your husband is definitely the father? I have counted back the times from when she was born, nine months back, and it takes it to the week that I was only sleeping with him. Me and Mr. Webb are already over with. All right, let me grab my calendar, see this. My daughter was born on May 9th of 2013. Okay. And then you take it back nine months later, that takes it to the week of August 26th through August 31st. August 26th through August 31st, you were sleeping with your... Just my husband. The thing about it, Your Honor, is the day that before I went on to life support, we did have sex. Well, that was the question I was about to ask. What day did you go into the hospital? I went into the hospital on August 26th, 2012. So you say in August 25th, you all were intimate? Yes, Your Honor. Is that correct, Ms. Yes, Forrest? Yes, Your Honor. Without protection? Yes, yes Your, Honor. Your Honor. Um, okay. So that's intimate with Mr. Webb. Now, you here to tell me you know for sure that your child has fathered by Mr. Forrest and you've got this close proximity? She looks... Yes, Your Honor, she looks just like my husband. She takes after him. But you do realize this difference in time, this is all a part of the same window of conception. You do understand that, right, Ms. Forrest? Yes, Your Honor. He wasn't there for the birth. Why wasn't he there for her? The reason <clears throat> I have not been there, Your Honor, I had got an email on Facebook from my aunt that Miss Forrest had had Elena. So you got news that the baby was born. You didn't hear from Miss Forrest herself. No, Your no, Honor, I, not at you, first. You heard through your family. Yes, Your Honor. I, I messaged his mother on Facebook and told her what hospital I was going to be at, where where I was going to be, when I was going to the hospital, and everything. Him or his family, knew, nobody, nobody showed up. Showed so, up. question: no. You me you messaged him. I messaged his on mother. Facebook, his family, to let them know. But why do that if you know for certain that Mr. Forrest, your husband, is the child's father? Just in case that he did come back uh, being the father, he could say that... He wasn't there for the birth. He oh, wasn't okay. there. So I had the a difficult labor. Is, even you had doubt. At first in my pregnancy, yes, yes, Your Honor. But he Who's wasn't... on the birth certificate? My husband I am. Is. You are. Well, uh, yes, and you would be presumed to be the father anyway. A child born to a marriage, into a marriage, the husband is presumed to be the father. I've took care of her since the day she was born. Well, a month after she was born. He ain't took care of her. <laughs> Mr. Webb, were you given an opportunity to see... No, Your Honor. ...baby Elena I after have, she was born? I have not met Elena... Every, we have set up dates plenty of times. They have all been under his terms where he wanted I to go. I have drove from Illinois whenever she told me that I could meet Elena. Oh, no. I spent the last $80 I had to put in gas. So, she had backed out, changed her phone number, and blocked me on Facebook. Three weeks later, And that's like I every number I get from you, it's always and changed. And to contact her to meet Elena, and she would not contact me back. That, that is why and we so, are here today. Elena is two years old. Yes, Your Honor. And you have still not... No, Your Honor. ...held this baby? No, Your Honor. Never one time? No, no Your Honor. No, Your Honor. 
I'm afraid that if he does get to see my daughter, that he can run off with her, and there's nothing I can do to get so her back. So you admit, Miss Forrest, that you've been blocking Mr. Webb from seeing yes. Elena. Yes, Your Honor. After you initially informed his family that she would, where she's going to be born. He wasn't there. I had a difficulty of uh, labor. I had a, a seizure and I had to go... But I'm saying if you informed his family because you believed it was a possibility he could be the father, he proved why wouldn't you give an oppor him an opportunity to see the baby? He proved he didn't care about not If he wants it. When, when she told him, he told her he did not care. No, I have so therefore, never said that, Your Honor. He ain't there for I two years. I have been in tears for the last two years trying to meet my daughter. And she has never let me once when talk I to her him, or see her. When I talked I have to him, I told him to I was pregnant. I have a fake Facebook account just to see pictures of Elena. I can't get past why you would not just allow him to see her if you thought it was a possibility that he could be her They dad. have all been For under For two his years. Heart. He's never wanted to meet any... He wants me to come 45 minutes from where I live to his mother's house. I'm not comfortable going alone with my daughter to his house. For 45 house. minutes? You're not comfortable going with you to see? Not alone, and he's always wanted me to come to his mother's house. No, Your Honor, I have planned to meet her in Dyersburg, Tennessee, which is a big town, just so I can meet Elena out in public. And what's wrong with that? I'm afraid that he's gonna end up taking my daughter and there's nothing he, I can do done, to get her he's back. He's done threatening to take the our daughter. Miss Forrest, are you afraid he's gonna take your daughter or are you afraid he's her biological father? I'm afraid that he's gonna take my daughter. He's done threatening to take our child. I have a voice. He called me about two weekends ago. I was on my way to Arkansas and he told me that if I don't let him see her, he's gonna take her to court or take me to court and he's gonna take her away from me. There's no way that he is getting my daughter. I well, have cared for her for two years. He hasn't... I will he's fight wanted to see her, but he hasn't wanted to do nothing DNA under... This DNA test proves that I am Elena's father. I will fight for my this full custody rights. This is my child, rights. and I will fight you for custody. There's no way he is getting my daughter. No, this is our child, not yours. And I will fight you for full custody. There's no way that he's getting full custody of my child. I will fight. No. So... Mr. Forrest, you're convinced you're Well, whether Elena's I am or he is. Oh, wait. Oh. Are you... No, no, no. I'm saying, are you convinced you're her biological father? There's a possibility, yes. But I don't know for 100%. You're raising her as... My own. So she thinks you're her daddy. She Correct. calls him calls daddy. you daddy. She calls me daddy. She doesn't have a choice, Your Honor, because Miss Forrest would not let me he, meet my daughter. He doesn't want to meet under my terms. I sit in the same seat countless times and I see men that say, well, I don't know if it's my child, Your Honor, so I'm not showing up at a hospital. I'm not coming by to see this baby. I don't even want to hold the baby. I don't even want to buy the baby a bottle because I don't know if it's mine. And quite frankly, I have to say that a part of me has to honor what they're thinking and their opinion and their, the way they feel because they have, they don't have certainty. In this case, I see a man that wanted to do just the opposite. I know it's just a possibility, but I still want to see her, know I... her, until I can figure out if she's mine, because I don't want to miss the time, and ultimately, I don't want her and to I'm miss out. And I'm afraid I'm going to lose my husband and my family over this. See, we got... We bond together. Do you do that? Well, how can he do that if she won't well, let her see him? Well, we does drive. He said he did not care. But I'm saying, how can he bond with her like that when you admit that your wife will not allow him to see her? I mean, look at her. Look at me and my daughter. She is happy. She looks just like me. She takes after me and everything. Mr. Webb, I see you are in a lot of pain. It hurts you to see her. <laughs> yes, Your Honor. And why does it hurt you? What do you feel? You just feel like you've missed out on two years. Yes, Your Honor. And until the DNA comes back showing that he is the father, he will not see her. <laughs> I'm sorry, that's just the way I feel. So is this Miss Forrest's idea or yours? This is mine. That, uh, that's what I thought. <laughs> that's what I thought. So I think it's time we go to the results. It's time. Yeah. Jerome. These results were prepared by DNA Diagnostics.
and they read as follows. In the case of Webb v. Forrest, when it comes to two-year-old Elena Forrest, as to whether her biological father is Mr. Webb or Mr. Forrest. It has been determined by this court that her biological father is Mr. Webb. Be clear, you did not just cheat him. You cheated her. Yeah. Cheated her. <laughs> you have... knew it could be a possibility. And I'm afraid I'm gonna lose my husband and my family over this. Well, this is my point. You thinking about yourself. Yeah. That's all he thought about when we were together? You thinking about yourself. He won't see and my the... daughter. I think. You need to step outside of yourself and your own selfishness. Yeah. Mr. Rice, you say you are ready to walk away from your 13-year marriage because you believe the child your wife is carrying is not yours. You claim Mrs. Rice has a history of cheating, and if today's paternity test proves you are not her child's father, your marriage will be History, is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. Mrs. Rice, you admit to making mistakes in your relationship, but are confident the child you carry was fathered by your husband, and you hope the results will save your marriage. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. So, Mr. Rice, you say everything is on the line today. Yes, Your Honor. Explain. It's like, I can't go through the rest of this marriage, like, well, the rest of this pregnancy without knowing because this happened before. And, and I'm trying, and like, I need this test to, to move forward, period. So much is on the line, you need to have these results confirmed before the baby's even born. Yes. Because you don't think you're gonna make it even to the birth of the baby, if not. That's correct, Your Honor. A lot of turmoil in your house, Mrs. Rice? Yes, Your Honor. Explain to the court what's going on. Well, I know I made a lot of mistakes in my past. You know, when he went to Iraq and everything like that, I did step out and, you know, I was enjoying life. But I realized my wrong. And I'm here to correct it because I know for a fact that this is his baby. Like, during the whole process, I, I decided to, like, change my life for him because I appreciate everything that he brings. And, and, and the household is real, is real hectic and everything like that. But I try all the time. I apologize all the time because I realize what's wrong, you know? And it started from me, and I wanted to end from me. All right. So, Mr. Rice, talk to me about what this past is. It's like the past, like, I went, when I first went to Iraq or whatever, well, I was happy. Like, I was, like, living in fairy tale life. Like, I was, you know, it used to be people in my platoon saying about other people's wives or their wives doing this, their wife. And I'm like, no, that, my wife's not doing it. I don't believe none of that. And then come to find out, she messaged me, like, within, like, uh, probably like, a year. Like, I was almost done with my tour, and she messaged me saying she was pregnant. It, it broke my heart. I'm like, how can you be pregnant when I'm, uh, when I'm here? So, wait. So, you left home a happy soldier and a married man until the bomb got dropped on you at your home. Yes, Your Honor. So as we think about the new baby, you say this kind of triggers you, this whole process, and it makes you doubt. Yes, Is there anything else that makes you doubt? Yes, Your Honor. Like, we, like, throughout the whole, you know, our whole marriage, we kind of separated and got back together and worked it out. But in 2018, we, you know, found out she was cheating again. Oh. How do you find out? Um... I seen deleted text messages, like, not just, like, one text message. It's like, I'll text her, like, that day, then I'll somehow get her phone, and I'll look through her phone, 
every single message deleted. So you became suspicious because yeah, who I'm... just deletes all the messages out their phone? I wasn't deleting all my text messages all of them. per se to keep it from him. It was more like I said we was having problems and I didn't want him to see it and it sparks up something in him to make him feel like, you know, we going back through the same cycle when we already agreed that we was about to separate anyway. Even though we was back together, we was separating at that same sense, you know? So you're not saying... You, you're admitting that you had text messages in your phone. I definitely had text messages in and my phone. And you're admitting that you cheated because at that point in your mind, your marriage was gonna be over. Yes. So you admit you cheated. Yes. And you find that out. Yes. And do you confront her? Do you say, hey, you're doing this again? I thought we were working on our marriage. What happens? Yeah, I confronted her and she, she told me the truth about what was going on because she said I was distant and and all that. So I, we decided this is just to separate. So we, we separated like the whole rest of the 2018 and then we end up getting back together January 2019. Yeah. And throughout that whole beginning of the year, you know, everything is all right, but I keep seeing messages. Now she's not deleting them. Now I'm seeing the messages from the, uh, the, another dude. It, it'd be small, subtle messages, but I'm like, yo, why are you still in contact and with then this I'm, person? I'm not... I'm not really replying, you know. If I do reply, it's very small, and there's no sexual relations between me and him or anything. Cut off, period. But I, your husband I, I doesn't know that. that. Mm -hmm. and, and given the history, he want to know why anybody even texting. Yeah. I understand that. Replying with one word, five words, an emoji. But I barely reply. It don't matter. Yeah. I understand. At that point, his mind... What are we up to now? Yep, and then I find out, like, you know, April come, then I find out she's, she's pregnant. So at first, I'm not thinking of, you know, anything bad. I'm thinking like, oh, finally, you know, she finally get pregnant. But then I just started feeling like, uh, what about those messages before? Like, mm -hmm. those past messages mm -hmm. from Mar February and March, like, mm -hmm. like what, what, what's, what's that about? So it gave me more doubt, like, maybe this one is not my child either. Because you're counting back and thinking to yourself, okay, we're pregnant now. You say we're pregnant, but just Couple last months ago, month, a few, months few ago. weeks ago, I'm seeing messages on your phone. Yes. If you want more episodes of Paternity Court, make sure to subscribe and click on the notification bell. When was the last time you were intimate with this other guy? January. In January. Yes. But your husband still sees texts in March. And then you pregnant in April. Wow. Yeah, but I, I wasn't replying to most of them. I really was not To replying. most of them? Most of them, because I can't sit here and lie to you, you know? I don't want you to. Only one I replied to is when he said happy birthday, because my birthday is in March. So when he said happy birthday, I just been kind and said thank you. You know, it always been real subtle. It never been, like, no conversation type stuff. But the real truth is you really have been exhibiting the same behavior that led to the first <laughs> incident. And I, I mean, at the point that you say, I cut somebody off, cut off means don't... He... Hold on. <laughs> cut off means don't talk to him. I understand. Right? So if we're back on now, there's such thing called blocking a number. Yes. Or mm -hmm. changing your number. And once he's forgiven you for, for such a huge mistake, it doesn't seem like you're doing enough to make sure it doesn't happen again. I mean, how am I supposed to do that extra step when he's so distant. He barely touch me. He barely take me out. He barely have a conversation with me. Like, we... It's no love there. It's no love there at all. And every time I turn around, he's ready to walk out the door every five... Well, let me ask you something. Are these men that you running around with uh, outside of your marriage, are you in love with them? Because you say it's no love here. Well, he's married to you, and he's also committed to you, and he also didn't leave no, you and divorce no you when there. you had a child by somebody else yeah. within the marriage. I don't know what love is, but that sounds pretty much like it. It's no, no, it's no. Love. I really don't know what love is to you, but that sounds like it. So when you say he don't love me, he he's he's not showing me love. What you doing out there ain't love either. Right. 
Mr. Rice, I want to understand your doubt. I want to understand what's your other doubt. I, I realize you say these text messages are coming in. Mm -hmm. What other doubts do you have? We've been together 13 years, and I never got her pregnant. Mm -hmm. So that, that kind of, like, that's another doubt. I'm like, I don't think I could have kids. What are you feeling? Why are you crying, Ms. Rice? Because I don't know how to fix it. I don't know how to fix this at all. It's like, ugh, I'm sorry. You don't have to apologize. Yeah. But... This is what this courtroom is for, to speak our truth, to try to get a greater understanding, to share what's in our hearts so we can try to figure out how to mend them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm just tired of hurting him, you know? I just want to end that, that bad cycle and start something new. You know, as a family, with nothing but good, positive vibes, you know? You know, and leave the negativity alone, because I'm really ready to leave all that in the past. So, Mr. Rice, you hear your wife speak about what she wants this life with you to be. Mm -hmm. You don't think you can father children. Yeah, because I, I took... Uh, I ordered an at-home fertility um, test online, and it came back that I had a low sperm count. So that's, that's another doubt in my head. And I'm trying to fight off all the doubts, like, no, this is mine, I believe her, you know, she didn't do anything, I could have kids, but the doubt is still there. I personally feel like he was in the military, the VA, you know, gave him some type of reimbursement money or whatever the case may be. And I think I hurt him so much, he was so sad and down and things like that. So when he got this money, you know, it kind of boosted him up a little bit. Like, he, he stood up stronger, he held his head up high, you know? And I just feel like that kind of made his little sperm swim, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, like, he just... He stood more confident. And <laughs> that's what, where this come from. All right, yeah, a confident man makes some confident sperm. <laughs> right? <laughs> appreciate your theory. <laughs> but in this courtroom, we do deal with science. Yes. <laughs> so I would like to call upon Dr. Jamila Gator so I can ask her some questions about low sperm count. Jerome, will you escort her in, yes. please? <sighs> Hello, Dr. Gator. Hello. Thank you for joining us again. You know I always have questions. Yes. Mr. Rice has testified that he took an at-home sperm count test that he purchased and it determined that he had a low sperm count. What did that really mean? So, he testified that he did a home sperm kit. To your testimony, the sperm count was low. Um, and so then in that case, really you need a full semen analysis to look at all the factors and actually count the number of sperm to see whether it is or is not possible to father a child. Yes, and then he submitted to that test. Yes. Because the court ordered that. And so what did those results of that test reveal? So that semen analysis was very abnormal. And normally, 15 million sperm or more is a normal sperm count. And in this case, there was only 3 million sperm. And so, all in all, that basically leaves less than 200,000 sperm available to father a child, which is extremely low and makes it very difficult. Wow. How are you feeling after you hear Dr. Gator's testimony? I don't know. It's like... It making me feel like it's not my child. And you feel like it's happening all over again? Yeah. Ms. Rice, have you prepared yourself that if this is not your husband's biological child? I did. But nothing happened. It's, this is just a miracle baby. Like, that's just how I'm looking at this, you know? Okay. Yeah, because I didn't do anything with anyone. Well, I think it's time that we get down to the bottom <laughs> of this. Because your marriage is on the line. Jerome, may I have the envelope, yes. please?
These results were prepared by DNA Diagnostics, and they read as follows. In order for us to determine paternity, a prenatal DNA test was performed. A blood sample was drawn from the mother, and fetal DNA was isolated from that sample. Genetic analysis was performed, and a probability of paternity was generated. In the case of rice versus rice, when it comes to the child that Mrs. Rice is currently carrying, it has been determined by this court. Mr. Rice, you are the father. <laughs> <laughs> you can stand over there with your wife and your baby. <laughs> How does that feel, Mr. Rice? Good. <laughs> uh. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And it was hard for me to come because I know I'm messy. I'm very, <laughs> I'm very messy, but my love is real. <laughs> you do have a miracle baby. <laughs> you really are going to be such a wonderful dad. Thank you, Ronnie. And you know what? You can be a wonderful mom right along with him. 